What's up guys, it's me, the Don Fnatic, and welcome to week 4 of the Pokemon GBA D-League. This week we are up against uh, Dan, Dan Eki and the, Rosen, the Rosa Raiden Borg. Make sure I get that right because he has already had a go at me in the DMs, like I have mentioned. So, um, that was for you, Dan. Uh, hopefully I haven't upset you too much with that pronunciation. If you pronounce Norwich any other way than Norwich, I am not going to be best pleased. But yes, we have got week four here. The teams, as you can see, are right in front of you. I'm trying to do this as quick as I can because I'm doing this on a Tuesday night when I'm actually going to be away from tomorrow morning right up until Monday afternoon. Um, so I'm in kind of a rush to get this out to you guys. So sorry if it's not the most informative uh, narration or, you know, uh, I'll try and keep it as good as possible. Um, if you guys haven't seen my team already, go check out the team builder because there is an in-depth analysis of what we have got there. So I won't go over what I've got in front of me now. Um, in detail, what we have got is Choice Scarf, Electivire, Life Orb, Bulk Up, um, Floatzel, Grassinium Z, Quiver Dance, Volcarona, Red, Bulky Registeel, Bulky Elatias, and Megalop. Dan on his side has got a scary team, lots of things pretty much what I was expecting. The one thing I wasn't expecting was the Frostlass, um, where I was expecting like a Tangrove to come instead, because um, the offense here in Garchomp, Magirna, Absol, and Darm is absolutely, excuse me, absolutely terrifying. Um, but he has got obviously these six mons. Five of the six I was expecting, the Darm, the Suicune, the Absol, the uh, McGinn and the Garchomp. The uh, the Frostlass, I can see why, obviously it can have this deck. I did bring the Spikes, it does hit Latia super effective. Otherwise it doesn't really do much, it kind of loses to everything else in my team. So, um, I just my initial thought was, you know, it's going to be some kind of like Spike stacker. So, um, without further ado, we're just going to get straight into this and uh, see how this game did in fact go. Um, obviously last week I had a horror show against uh, Jolt. So I was out for some kind of redemption this week. Um, we are against Daneki, and he has lost the last few games as well. So we're both 1 and 2, both in desperate need for a win. I'm going to lead with my uh, Garchomp. Garchomp, sorry. I don't know where I got that from. Electivire. Um, fearing, you know, he might be leading with the Garchomp. I'm going to click Volt Switch because I don't know if he'll want to risk uh, me running Hidden Power Ice slash Ice Punch straight away. Plus Volt Switch will give me initiative and uh, give a nice good amount of damage on this thing. I've got no special attack investment, so that's a good... Uh, good amount of damage there and it breaks any potential sashes so here I'm expecting him to go for a spikes and boy oh boy I wish I could pause this um will -O -S uh, this will -O -S this um wi-fi replay otherwise I would I was so close to going into floats all there because I knew he was gonna I, I had a gut feeling he was gonna click willow um Dan said to me after the game you know going into lop is, is a fair play you would expect that expecting him to go to spot for spikes um, but I do uh, go into Lop, and unfortunately Lop is burnt, I have no kind of Cleric, but I know that it can still do some decent chip damage to his team, so you know what, I'm, I'm going to have to use it as best I can, but Dan does have the Protect, so this is like an anti lopony Pokemon, basically, um, which isn't good, so uh, I'm like, okay, I'm down heavily already, Lopony, one of my major threats for this week is severely damaged, so I'm going to click Toxic here in case he wanted to switch, because I didn't think he'd stay in for another high jump kick, um, I'm thinking it probably still kills at this point because Frostlass isn't the bulkiest thing in the world. Um, but he actually stays in and gets other layer of spikes. Which is not the worst, but not the best. Um, I do get the poison off on this thing, so it's obviously going to be worn down. But that's not exactly what I wanted. If I had clicked high jump kick, I could have probably killed this thing. Or at least brought it down to a really low amount of health. Um, here I'm going to switch into Volcarona because I'm thinking, okay, he's going to have uh, something that probably won't damage me. And I don't want him to send up too many more spikes. So I'm going to switch this thing in and go offensive. He does go for the Ice Beam, which isn't going to do much because Volcarona is fat and I'm a fire type. Does 20 damage. Um, he's going to switch out here, I'm confident. So I'm just going to go for the Quiver Dance. Because I've got to go all out attack now. Um, however, I make a really bad play. And I know, don't tell me about how bad it is because I, upon as soon as I did it, I realised this is a bad play. He brings in the Chomp. I think he brings in the Chomp because he knows he can take a hit. Um, however... I had it in the back of my mind, he scarfed. Is he really going to click Earthquake this early on? Because I have got that Latias in the background, and he scarfed. Which I, I knew he would be. I just knew he would be, because he needed it to outspeed. A plus one Volk, uh, scarfed Staraptor, scarfed Volk. I just leave Volcarinium to die, and I now have no good way of dealing with half his team. So that was a really bad play. I know he scarfed now, so I'm going to get a free switch into my Latias. Here I'm going to show off the cool bit of tech which I did have, for, uh, you know, for Magirna, because I knew that every time Magirna, uh, Latias came in, Magirna got a free switch. I'm going to click Earthquake, and now what the thing, uh, the thing this does is, it does actually break the Sugarberry, which is quite nice. Um, this thing can't switch into any more ground moves, it can't set up as easily, and it does a, a reasonable chunk. 
Um, Earthquake again, probably bring it down to yellow. Um, it's probably a free hit KO from this range, but obviously that means he has no boosting item, no Z-move, uh, and no more resistances to ground, which is nice. So I'm going to play into my Registeel here. It's the safest which I have. And he clicks Trick Room, and I'm like, ah, oh, crap, that's that's really scary. Um, I am Chopperberry, and depending on what he is, or Sphere, or the Focus Blast, I might be able to take a few more hits. Um, the Chopperberry goes off here. I'm going to click Seismic Toss just so I can get some damage off, because if he wants to go into Frostlast, that's fine, I'll kill it with Nine Head. That Aura Sphere does literally nothing, which is quite funny because it's a Magirna. Um I'm going to go for Seismic Toss, and it does a good amount of damage, so I think this thing is HP invested. Obviously, fair enough, it's going to be max special attack, max HP, minus speed, so it's some kind of bulky thing. Um, because he's got the Trick Room up, I'm just safe to click Seismic Toss again. Um, and because uh, the Trick Room is up, I'm actually able to outspeed this Frostlast on this next turn. Um, don't know whether Dan remembered this or whether he was just sucking his thing off. I'm going to click the Iron Head and it is going to actually take out the uh, Floatzel, which is really, not the Floatzel, the, the Frostlast, that's what I'm looking for. And he gets the Cursed Body again, so two times I've attacked it and he gets the Cursed Body. Nice meme. Um, he goes out into the Absol here. I'm pretty confident he's going to be clicking Focus Blast and or Superpower. And Lopany is pretty much dead weight to me now, so I'm just going to sack that thing off. Um, if he goes for super power, it will give me some kind of relatively free switch, because he's going to be minus one attack, minus one defense. Um, I'm expecting a physical one, because I'm expecting him to have Sucker Punch and Knock Off this week. Um, probably like Scarfed Latias, or Scarfed Mon, basically, because it will be able to do a lot of damage. Um, but now, two of my like main hard hitters have gone in Lop and the Volk, so I'm like in a really bad position right now. Um, he does go for the super power, like I thought he would, and Lop is just going to go down. That turn one play really crippled Lop and, and set me on the back foot. And I just had that inkling. I knew he was going to do it, and that is just going to haunt me forever. Um, but I do go into Floatzel here. I know this is going to draw out the, um, the Suicune, or uh, that's what I expect him to do. So he does go out into Bubble Man, and I'm just going to pull the double. I expect I pull a double uh, into my... What's it going to be? It's going to be the Electivire, I'd imagine. No, it's into my Latias, so I did expect the Suicune, and this is kind of where things just, shit really hits the fan, basically, for want of a better phrase. Um, I did mention in my team builder, there's a threat that he could bring Cro Crocoon, and I couldn't fit any phasing on my team, and I really didn't think he'd bring it, I, there was always, there's always the possibility, but Clefable could have easily came this week, and I could have bought Unaware, so I'm quite surprised he did bring it. Um, and I'm now just going to have to sit here and click Earthquake. Uh, basically, I'm now having to sack off Latias. Just do as much damage to this thing as I can. Um, because I need to basically get Electivire in for free. And just hit it with a Thunder Punch as easy as I can. Um, there's not really much I can say here. Because I think it's like 10 turns of Calm Minding and uh, switching around. So I think here I'm actually going to go into Registeel. So I'm like, okay... I'm especially defensive, I'll take these scalds relatively well, even a plus three. Um, if he wants to burn me, that's fine. I am seismic toss. Um, the fact he hasn't gone for substitute means I'm pretty confident he's not got it. Um, I'm fully expecting scald and rest at this point. Whether he has ice beam as a third, uh, fourth move, or if he has sleep talk, I don't know. That scald does a lot. He doesn't burn me, which is nice, because it doesn't mean I'll be able to get a second seismic toss off afterwards. Um, and we do good damage with that seismic toss. He is going to go for another scald here. Um, which annoyingly doesn't take me out. I would have loved to have been burnt there. As weird as that sounds, if I'd have gone down there, um, I would have got a free switch into my, uh, my, what's it called? My thing. Um, I can't even remember what it's called. The Electivire, that's the one. I would have got a free switch out to my Electivire, but because I lived, I'm kind of stuck here with my Registeel. Here I expect him to kill me, so I just click Stealth Rocks, so I have Stealth Rocks. Um, what I should have done is, um, I don't know why he clicked Calm Mind. I don't know if he expected me to switch or what. But he keeps clicking Calm Mind, and I could have switched into Electivire. In, in hindsight, this is. Uh, switched into Electivire and stopped this from happening. Um, I don't know why I didn't. I clicked Toxic this turn, so I'm like, okay, in the off chance he doesn't have rest. Um, if he does have rest... I mean, I'm pretty sure he does at this point, because we haven't seen him, so he's going to have Chester Berry. He's going to click it this turn if he doesn't click it at all, because literally any of my physical mons can come in and kill it. And there's the rest. So we do see the rest. Um, and he's going to go back up to full health. And as we'll see, he does have the Chester Berry. So if I had switched to Elect via either of them points, I could have scared this thing out. Um, I would have to have had Click Thunder Punch, really, because... Um, 
I, I would have to bring in the Garchomp, basically. I would have to bait that in to have any chance of making a comeback. But I do go for the Seismic Toss, and he's awake, and he's going to quick scold. And, of course, it's going to kill me. So now I'm like, well, crap. I, I literally have nothing for this Crocoon. Uh, I go into Doomfist. I have to click Thunder Punch. If I had Wild Charge, this could have done a, a greater amount of damage, and then I might have been in a better position. Because um, I could have probably taken this thing out with my Latias' Earthquake. Because I would have done more damage. Um, if I'd have got a crit or a power, that would have been even better, but I don't. Um, so now I'm going to go out into Doomfist. Uh, sorry, Doomfist goes down to the school because he is a plus five. Um, in comes Corrin. It's the best thing I've got. I'm going to have to click Earthquake or Dragon Pulse and hope I get a crit, basically. Um, I click Earthquake. He's got the freest of rests here to do what he wants. Um, the Earthquake, I mean, if it was a crit, I might have taken him out, but he does click the rest, and I'm pretty sure you guys can see where we're going here. Um, I'll spoil it for you now, so you don't have to wait around, because I'm just kind of sitting here waiting for the outcome, knowing what's going to happen. I lose 5-0. Um, the, the, the Suicune doesn't sweep me, but it, I mean, it effectively does. Um, I go into Float Slither because my only chance of making any kind of comeback or not losing 5-0 is by flinching this man to death, so I'm going to click Bulk Up. Reveal the set. Floatzel making its debut, by the way. Um, go Floatzel. Uh, I'm going to have to click Waterfall. Now, I knew Suicune would be coming, but uh, like if I could have weakened Suicune or got rid of it, uh, Floatzel kind of done a lot of work to the team he brought. So, sad times. Unfortunately, Floatzel doesn't get to do what it can do this week, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll, hopefully we can see what it does in the future. Um, I do get one flinch, so I'm like, okay, is this really going to happen? Am I going to flinch him, like, four times in a row, which is what I need? Um, the second one, uh, it's, it's a definite 5 at KO, and I, I don't flinch him. And sadly, Floatzel is like pathetically weak on the defences, um, so I'm just going to die to that, which is a, it's a shame. Um, but I, I didn't really have much of a chance here, so I, the only thing, the only way I've got of like winning here is clicking Dragon Pulse and open for crits. Um, because I don't think he's specially defensive. He's calm minded to plus 5, so if I, like, if you ignored the stat boosts. And I get a crit, that's going to be doing a lot of damage. Um, he does get the school burn, finally. Um, not that it matters, because all my all these other schools just, just killed my things. And it's a it's a burnt half health Latias versus the world at this point. And he just decides to switch out. Fair enough. Um, if I did crit, I could have... I mean, he's trying to preserve differential here. He knows he can take any hit. I'm a bulky Lati. Um, and thankfully, he didn't drag out any longer than it needed to be. Um, I do go for the Dragon Pulse. If I'd got a crit there, that would have been nice because I might have killed this thing. Um, but the Latia, uh, sorry, the Absol is here. It's just going to click Knock Off and it's going to kill me. Um, I am Rocky Helmet to deal with the Darm. This is my Darm check, as I said. And as you can see, we have been completely screwed over 5-0 um, again two weeks in a row. So um, I was a lot more upset by this game purely because... I felt my matchup was a lot better this game. Uh, it's still ridiculously hard. I mean, he has a McGinn, for God's sake, with Z-moves. Um, and a Garchomp, which defeats my court wall core on its own. I was incredibly scared, but I felt like it was a more winnable matchup than last week with Jolt. Um, and it, the whole thing, turn one with Lop burning, was what set me on the back foot. And that really threw me off. And that kind of, yeah, had me on the back from the start. Because I, I think, he, yeah, he was scarfed on Chomp, obviously. And I could have dealt with that. Potentially with the, uh, the the Latias, the combo of Latias and um, the Registeel would have been able to take on the Garchomp. So, you know, I could have dealt with that. Um, I no Dom. I don't know if Dom was scarfed or not. Uh, I we never actually saw it. Um, we saw the rest of his team. Uh, I, like Lopany does like work to it. Um, it. It kills the Frostlass, kills the um, kills the Absol, kills the Dom if it's not scarfed. Um, does huge damage to Magirna, huge damage to Suicune, so, you know, if, if I didn't get burnt, Lop does a huge amount of work to his team. Um, and uh, the fact that in my mind, I was like, you know, he could be will o -Wisp. Turn 1, I was like, he's leading with this, he's obviously expected something. Is he going to click the will o -Wisp? Um And if I'd have gone into my Volk, which would have been a fair play, because he, I don't think he has much to kill me. I think it gets Rock Tomb, um, which is, would have been a really nice pick on that, obviously. Uh, bring sorry on that. So, uh, 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 Volcarona would have been a better play. Turn one would have absorbed the Will O Wisp. Um, could have then just clicked Flame for I wouldn't have had to really thought about setting up at this point. Baited in uh, a Suicune or, or the Chomp. You know, I'm going to get some damage off on the Chomp if so. Um, 
If not, I can then set up on the Suicune, because at plus one, I don't think Scald's going to be doing too much. And I can just do the Z Giga Drain and, and do damage to everything on his draft, basically. So, in hindsight, you know, that was a... It was a really good play. I don't think it's a bad play. Uh, he did say to me, you know, he'd have probably done the same. Uh, you know, it's like a free switch in. Um, immune to a Ghost Stab and resist the Ice Stab. Uh, if he wants to set up Spikes, you know, that's what you'd expect him to do. And then potentially Destiny Bond as well. So, um... It's, it's the way the match went. I can't do anything about it now. I played terribly again. That's two weeks in a row now. And I'm just looking to be really bad at Pokemon uh, at the moment. Um, fingers crossed. Uh, next week we've got um, we've got Leo, Six Foot Hacks, and the Durham Drodigans. Now, I've done my team building for that before I go away. And I feel quite confident in uh, what I've got going for me. So, um, hopefully, you know, there's the same kind of confidence where I went into the game with Magic and felt like I could do something here. Fingers crossed. We can go into the game versus Leo next week and actually come out with a respectable score. I don't care if I lose or do bad in the league, as long as I have close games. As long as I can prove I'm okay. I, I swear these are just, you know, off games. I'm not doing horrendous, but at the moment I'm not really helping myself. So I've rambled on long enough. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you go check out uh, Dineki's, um links below to his Twitter and his YouTube. He does lots of cool stuff. Um, lots of uh, Citra Wi-Fi battles and things. And make sure you go and check out a bit his discord i believe um where he does all his wi-fi battles and stuff so yeah hopefully you guys um weren't too bored watching this because uh, it, it wasn't the most exciting game and it was definitely a whitewash again but hey we'll live and learn um and i'll make sure not to do it again he says just before he loses 5-0 to leo again guaranteed so thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time bye